train the muscles, not the joints. So welcome back to National Land Bodybuilding. And today I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about team bodybuilding. And I thought it would be kind of good to get one of my friends here that is a goofball, whatever, from the gym. And once in a while he actually did some camera work for me and stuff. And then uh, and once in a while he come to me for some advice on natural bodybuilding and stuff. So I thought it'd be interesting for him to talk to you a little bit about uh, what his experience is with losing body fat because he was quite overweight at some point and then he used bodybuilding to get in shape. And at the same time, uh, he's been incorporating some of my advice here and there in his training and then basically he can share how it's helped him and how uh, maybe his body's a little bit different and what he feels that is right for him. So yeah, so let's talk about team bodybuilding because I started bodybuilding as a teenager. I started at 14 years old as far as when I started bodybuilding and never quit since. And of course, you know, your body goes through many stages. When you're a teenager, you're at a different stage because you're going through puberty and all this kind of stuff as opposed to being an adult. So there's a tremendous opportunity for growth, but at the same time, there's this immense amount of social pressure to be, you know, 30 years in the gym in about four months, right? So a big mistake a lot of guys make is they have false expectations about what they're supposed to be at. And in some cases, they get a little bit obsessed about dieting off all their muscle and, and eating too strict. And then uh, sometimes they don't pay attention to their diet at all. Like me, I never paid attention to my diet all through my teen years, which probably hurt me a little bit. I probably could have made a lot more gains if I actually did pay attention to my nutrition. So anyway, this is Anthony. I don't even know his freaking last name. What's your last name anyway? Because okay. you keep changing it around no, on me. I, I mean, I social media is all days, different. He's, got, he's like Anthony Physique and stuff on Instagram or something. Well, is that what it is? Well, no, it used to be now. It's just that gym guy. See, he changes his name all the time. He's like, he's like a spy. It's like a, he always something different, right? So. Anyway, so yeah, so you have some questions or whatever, or you want to share something or whatever, what do you want to talk about? What do you want to talk about, man? I mean, I'm right here to help you out. What do you want to talk about? Finally, you pinned me down. Well, we got cameras set up and everything. Well, what was it like for you at my age? Uh, I was just awesome right from the beginning. Yeah. I never had anything to worry about. <laughs> just so well, easy. Life, life was so easy. <laughs> no, it, it, well, as, as far as what it was like for me at, at your age when I was, uh, well, first of all, when I started at 14, it's different because you're 17 now, right? Yeah, Almost, 17. Yeah. So when I was 17, I'd already had three years of training in, so I was quite identified with being a bodybuilder at that point, and a lot of people knew me as the guy that weight trained and stuff, and I had some pretty good shape. I was 160 pounds, and I was about five foot eight, five seven, and uh, uh, I, had, I was lucky, right? I grew up with a gym in my garage. My dad was a power lifter, and even if I was guided improperly for certain things, you know, to strain your ass off, he did give me some good advice. My dad gave me some good advice, like stick to reps of 10 and stuff, so I didn't strain myself too much, because a lot of my friends were coming over the house, and they get a shoulder injury right away because they're like doing two reps on the bench all the time and you know they'd be hobbling around and they couldn't train for months on end because they were injuring themselves so what was it like for me i i enjoyed training but of course it was never enough i always was seeing these guys in muscle and fitness and saying oh i should be like them i should be like them why am i not 220 pounds and five foot eight and stuff and just absolute master of the universe you know I put in my three years, like that, that's, that should be happening. So uh, I think as a teenager, you're almost programmed to never be satisfied. So yeah, that's pretty much what it was like for me. But at the same time, I, I just continued training and knew that I was in it for the long term. And yeah, I was lucky I had a dad. So, um, you know, if you're lucky enough to be around a few people that uh, give you some realistic expectations, then uh, then you understand that don't worry you're, you're not doing anything wrong. It's just this is a long-term game It's not about just getting gains in three months and then yeah. looking like Arnold Schwarzenegger, right? So Yeah, yeah, exactly do one set of rows and then that's it look like Arnold. Yeah, that's right posters and everything Did you know you're gonna be this big when you started training? I actually thought I was gonna be a lot bigger really? when, yeah, Because that's the unrealistic sort of teenager sort of yeah. ideal, right? Like I thought like I'd read muscle fitness and I'd see Lee Labrada and I you know, he's a smaller body but then see Lee Haney and see uh, Dorian Yates later on, you know, because he came out in the 90s and stuff, but at the same time, uh, that was in my early 20s and stuff. But I had this expectation when I was a teenager to be like the guys in the muscle magazines. So that was what I was basically aspiring towards. I was aspiring to be 250 pounds at five foot eight and be able to bench press 500 pounds. That was what I wanted to do. That was my goal. And I haven't achieved it yet, but you never know. I'm still waiting for it. I'm still, still haven't achieved my best physique yet. So that's why you guys are tuning in to see what happens. Yeah, so have I achieved everything? No, but at the same time, I'm happier with what I do have now than I thought I would be. So that's the other difference is that I thought I, you know, as a teenager, I just had the, like I wasn't as mature as you, right? Like when I was a teenager, I had these superficial dreams of yachts and, and Ferraris and all this kind of stuff. And it, well, yeah, but I think you guys have the benefit of being on social media and stuff. You see that there's a lot of rich assholes that aren't really that happy, you know what I'm saying? So you get a little bit more educated about that kind of stuff, you know, at least uh, the mature, you know, teenagers that are kind of more aware. 
But me, I was, uh, I was looking for fame and fortune. I wanted to be the next Jean-Claude Van Damme. That's actually what I wanted to be. And anything less was not gonna, well, not gonna be good enough for me. So anyway, uh, I got a lot of wake-up calls in my life, but at the same time, it turned out to be better than I thought. And yeah, so that, that's the expectations I had. But at the same time, I found out that I could be more fulfilled and more happy with where I'm at right now. And, and I enjoy training more now than I ever thought I could. So the truth is I actually enjoy training now more than I did as a teenager. Whereas when I was a teenager, I was doing it just to get to an end. You know, I was like trying to get big and strong and have a certain, sort of, a certain type of social status, but I wasn't doing it because it was a happy sort of thing for me. It was more like just face the pain so that way I didn't have to face the pain of bullies or, or something like yeah. that, right? That yeah, so it was like trading pain for less pain somewhere yeah. else in my life, right? Yeah. yeah. But now it's just, I just enjoy it. I just love it. It's like a relationship with me. It's like I'm visiting a friend when I lift weights. What is it that you learned from my YouTube channel? Like, what is it that you found was the most useful advice in the YouTube channel that actually helped you? The most useful information I ever used, or not used, but I learned from you, yeah. is to not go ask grass squats. Okay. That is probably number one, and also time under tension. That has changed the dynamic of how I train. Like, especially when I go into the gym, I don't be like, oh, hey, let's go do bench press. Let's try and put on two plates. Let's, let's try and do that for one rep. You know, mm -hmm. like, uh, I'm not the biggest guy in the world, but I uh, know I want to be able to do two plates one day. Soon mm -hmm. I'll be able to. Mm -hmm. But instead of like going to the gym, like, oh, yeah, let's do that. It's like, no, let's, <laughs> let's grab 50 pound dumbbells. Let's go on the flat bench and let's do that for 15 or 20 reps. Let's see if I can do that. Mm -hmm. And I, Keep time, keep tension on my chest, and if my triceps give out, then well, then that's my weak link, like like he said. Mm -hmm. I there, pretty much everything you have watched on his channel, I have learned, and I can actually agree with everything you've said because mm -hmm. I've tr tried to train the way you do, and it's absolutely insane. If you try to squat like him, <laughs> good luck with it. You're 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 gonna feel the burn. You're gonna want to quit within five reps. I guarantee. It's mm. spectacular. I remember uh, when I first tried doing your squats, I, <laughs> two squ three actually, three reps in, I was like, my legs, what is it, what's going on? I didn't really feel it too much anywhere else. I was just, just my quads, I, they're just burning. Mm. And I wanted to give up at only three sets in. Yeah. But yeah. I kept on going through and I kept on pushing through and you look at the best pump you'll ever get. It's, it's try. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. It's really, it's okay, so basically what you learned was to change from idea mm -hmm. to experience. Yeah. And, and that's really what I'm trying to do with people is, is and, you know, because I started like you too, right? Like I, I had an idea of what was supposed to happen when I walked in the gym. And I have an idea of what exercise I'm supposed to do. And then I would just say, okay, I got to bench press and do a bench press. But it would just be performing an exercise, but I wouldn't actually be feeling what was going on. But at some point it turned to feeling, and sometimes I had injuries and stuff and I was forced to feel. And then from there, I started to realize, oh, there's a relationship going on. Like here I feel the chest, here yeah. I started to feel the shoulder, here the tricep. And then I started to notice how my physique would change based on what I was feeling. And that's how I started to um, take control of the exercises and say, okay, now work with the ranges of motion that I want to hit, the areas I want to hit. So yeah, I think that's the thing. Is if you can change your training from idea to relationship at a faster rate, you're going to get way more gains. Definitely. You know, so you're, you're not going to screw yourself by yeah. basically constantly trying to, you know, uh, do something that doesn't make any sense, right? I mean, um, you wouldn't try to stuff food into your stomach if you were not hungry. I mean, <laughs> just to kill I mean, yourself. Like, I'm, I, I kind of do right now because I'm trying to be as big as I can. Yeah, but I mean, you try to put in food, but I mean, but like, say you felt like your stomach was going to blow up yeah. and you're going to be in the yeah. emergency room, you wouldn't be starting to, tr you wouldn't try to put more food in it at that point, right? So. They have, people have to understand that life and the body is like a dance. It, it's like you respond and then you react and then you, 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 you listen and you're aware and then something's happening and then you respond to that. Uh, and that's really what every repetition is. The relationship with you have, like I noticed probably two months ago, I started training like off of your videos and going by feel. And every time I do anything, even if it goes to rows, I, I'm doing a pull up, it doesn't matter what I do, I just. I like go into my mind and then go into my, I don't know, it's like I think in my head of doing it instead of like, I sometimes I even close my eyes and I'll do reps. And it sounds dangerous, but it's like before I do that, I, I look and I re remember physically how far I go down, how far I go up. And like sometimes I'll even close my eyes and I'll really get the feel for it. Mm. And I just, 
It's remarkable. It's it's different. And afterwards, like in a couple of weeks or like two weeks, and like I d definitely notice the results. It's yeah, ever, thanks to you. Like if I didn't listen to you from the start, I probably wouldn't have gained any weight. I probably I probably would be like more looking fat, like more bloated because of the way I was training. Because I was doing like. I was looking with my ego, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna go into the gym, I'm gonna try and do 315, like, this is like, let's say like six months ago, or a year ago, mm -hmm. I wanna do 315 for deadlifts. And I'm using, going my ego, I'm gonna, I'm gonna mess something up in my back. But no, just change my mentality when I go in the gym, it's like, no, let's lower that weight, let's just push the muscle with higher reps, get that, the blood flow in it, that's just, that's, it's, it, it's almost like I can't explain it. Yeah, yeah. Because you well, it's, it's, it's the nutrients in there, right? Yeah, but but it's hard to explain an experience. That's the thing. Yeah, that's the thing. When it's you just you have to do it. it, you need to deepen the experience of your your rep, deepen your experience of your set, deepen your experience of the body, and that that's really what this this is really when this bodybuilding thing becomes a spiritual path. Mm -hmm. It's not just about just doing something kind of like following some sort of, like, like for instance, like say you went to dance school. Okay, let's just talk about dance. And then you just follow the steps, step one, step two, step three, step one, step two, step three. But if you did those steps, no matter what song came on the radio mm -hmm. and you didn't change to, to, to be in alignment with rhythm or tempo or anything, it would look really stupid. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing. Like your body's going through changes. Like you notice, like, you know, I just saw you today and it looked like you just gained an inch in height or whatever. Uh, the thing is you've got to respond as your body's different then you need to respond differently in the reps and sometimes you might feel like going heavy one day sometimes you need to stay light because it's dangerous to go heavy that day yeah, yeah. so this is why awareness has to be the first thing uh, to expand and most people are blind when they're in the gym that they're very unaware so they need a little bit of a template but in the end the, the growing in awareness has to be the first priority and second is just the weight that you're lifting yeah. and some people disagree with that but but i'm telling you if you as you grow awareness you will be able to make better decisions for yourself in the gym when to go heavy when not to go heavy you know that sort of thing uh it's about gaining body wisdom i guess that's really what this is about it's gaining body wisdom so you've gained a lot in the last year or so oh, I've learned, um, I've learned so much in, just in this past year like i wish i learned everything I learned this year, like the year before, because I think I could even be just a little bit bigger, a little bit, maybe mm. even a little bit more leaner too, but mm. it's better to learn it now than never. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I learned it when I was in the mid-20s, basically, when I really started to really get this down. So the fact that you're getting it before you're even 18 years old is crazy, right? Because I received my first massive injury at the end of 18 years old where I herniated a disc in my back and stuff because I didn't, I wasn't paying attention to my body properly. I wasn't actually really responding to what was going on in the moment. I was just pushing through everything, no matter what. And uh, yeah, it started to break me. So that's why I was forced to start to become aware because I was like, okay, well, last time I didn't pay attention, this is what happened. So now what do I do, right? So yeah, so the thing is you started off uh, training how many years ago? Two, almost two. Two years, okay. Two years. So, so two years ago you started training and then how much, like you were quite overweight when you started, yeah, I was right? really overweight. Well, when I first, before I even started training, right? Like before, like, it was probably uh, three summers ago, and uh, I weighed about, I was roughly the same height, like just under, because I haven't grew, grew too much. Mm -hmm. I think I'm at my max height right now, at like six foot. Mm -hmm. um, I was 236 pounds, and I said I had to lose the weight. So I would go for a jog um, every day for two hours straight, and sometimes I wouldn't eat, which was really bad. Mm -hmm. and. Then I started watching um, Pumping Iron, and then I would see Arnold, and I like, got inspired by that, and he's talking about protein and all that stuff. So I started just like eating chicken, and I just started, anything that had protein in it, I would just eat. And I thought like, oh, protein, it's gonna help me lose weight, I'm gonna get big from that. But no, I would, yeah, I'd go for jogs two hours straight, no breaks, I would force myself to do it. I did that for about a solid six months. Lost the boat, I got down to 160. But it wasn't a healthy weight, because I'm at six foot, and I looked very skinny fat and I still kind of, I don't like suffer from it, but I still kind of have that skinny fat look. It's kind of, it's, it's slowly going away as yeah. I get older, I've noticed it, but yeah. I was stuck with that. And then when I started going to the gym, I was probably 168 and I still look skinny fat. And yeah, I didn't really knew too much about training. I was training in my basement with like free weights. I think every bum's team's done this. If there's free weights, you're like, oh, let's go pick it up and lift it. Anyways, mm -hmm. I don't know. I was kind of just messing around with weights. I, I got the pump. I noticed the pump. I would, that's one of the first things I noticed when I was training. I, and then I started 
learning more and more and more. And then I saw you in the gym one day, and I, I didn't, I didn't, <laughs> I just thought you were natural at first, right? Because I was being optimistic. I'm like, no, that guy's probably natural. And I remember, I believe you came up to me, and I think I was doing incorrect form, and you helped me out. Yeah, what, was he, what were you doing? I think I was doing a uh, uh, dumbbell press. Dumbbell presses, yeah. And coming down too far or something? Yeah, yeah. I was coming down too far, and my short, when I was going down, it was more like this. Oh, okay. Yeah. And my elbows weren't locked, I wasn't going down fully. It was more like this, flared out. Yeah, yeah. And from that moment, it changed. It was probably yeah, a year ago, and yeah. So I was training a year, just kind of just messing around with different programs, uh, and uh, I did a really big bulk, and uh, I was really, really fat. I was just really, really fat. And I was like, I'm gonna do a cut, because you know, I wanna be cut for girls. I wanna have abs, I wanna look good, I wanna feel confident, because I, I used to have zero confidence, just none, so I did that, and it was probably the worst decision I've ever done. I don't ever recommend doing a cut when you're a teenager. It doesn't matter how much you want those abs, abs really don't matter. You want to grow first. Get abs in your 20s. Just don't even worry about it. Yeah. You, you well, that's, that's the thing that. that we see like quite a bit. Like guys want to, they, they lose a, some body fat because they need to lose a little bit of body fat, but then they get stuck in the losing and constantly losing, losing, losing. Like they're always like looking to lose, but bodybuilding isn't a form of anorexia. Yeah. Bodybuilding is about building the body, right? So ultimately what you want to do is you want to build that muscle so you build the metabolism. So mm -hmm. yeah, at first, if you have an excessive amount of body fat, say you're 30% or 40% or something like that, yeah, you might want to be aggressive as far as what you're eating and, and you know, really lower those calories down a little bit just to lose a little bit of fat for a period of time. But in the end, you do want to change that paradigm around at some point and gain muscle and, and really work on just, uh, you know, feeding the muscles, not feeding the fat stores, but eating the right type of food, you know, stable blood sugar type foods like brown rice, yams and chicken and, and fish and having that stable meal every two or three hours and keeping that blood sugar stable. And, you know, that, that's really a great base to start with. But the thing is, because of Instagram and because of all these types of posts on the internet where people see somebody that it's, that's dieted after they've already gained muscle, yeah. they're looking at these people and they're like, oh, I want abs. So they want to cheat the <laughs> system, right? So they're looking at these guys that naturally either have fast metabolisms already. So, you know, some people are just born with abs, you know, they're born like really lean and they're, and, and they're just skinny, like they're basically have no muscle. So, or they're looking at a guy that's basically been training for 10 years and because he has so much muscle mass, now he can shred down and look really good when he gets lean. But that's not what got him to look like that. And most of it was 10 years of training and feeding the muscle, right? So I think some people miss out on that. They start to look at that stuff and they start to try to, you know, fast track the progress just to get abs, but they're not really thinking about the long-term plan. It's, uh, it's like residual income. If you have residual income, like a lot of different, say you had houses and you're renting them all out, that would be a better way of making money instead of just selling a house right away and getting rid of it. And now you got some money, but after that's spent, and that's it, you're done, right? So it's the same thing with gaining muscle. When you gain muscle, you gain a metabolism, and that's really important. So people forget that. Yeah, that's, that's true. This past yeah. year, since I've, I've put on a bit more size, I don't, not like a ridiculous amount, because it takes years. Mm. Um, yeah, I've been just eating crazy. Like, it's weird. I can go for like, I'll, I'll eat a really big meal, right? And it can even be like even bad foods. And I won't eat for a couple hours, maybe like four hours. Usually I try to eat every two to three hours and I actually get away with it. <laughs> Surprising because usually my metabolism has always been really bad because as a kid I've always been a little bit more overweight than everyone. And yeah. Most well, of the types of food you eat, it's yeah. not always... You know, when you're eating straight table sugar and just, <laughs> yeah. just carbs and stuff all the time, then and like you're not oh, and you're not balancing out the blood sugar with protein and stuff. Yeah, it's it's totally different. So some people refactor eating with getting fat, but it's not eating that makes you fat. It's eating the wrong stuff over and over again. That's what gets you fat. So it's it's really important to understand that eating isn't all equal. You know, it depends what you're eating. Mm -hmm. And uh, some people say, oh, if I eat too much of this, I'll get fat. It's like no, it, not all foods are created equal when it comes down to feeding the body, which is. The major difference, like I said, when I, when I was 22 and I dieted for my first show and I started to eat healthy, finally, my body responded so well because it was starving. There was a lot of foods and protein I just wasn't getting in my system. And I started to notice a lot of positive side effects from having protein and stable blood sugar as well because I, I used to get a cough every single year. I used to get this bad cold every single year, all through my teenage years and everything. Well, as soon as I started eating more protein, and of course, all your white blood cells and stuff are made out of the amino acids, all of a sudden, I never got a cold anymore. I wasn't getting sick, I never had a cough, nothing. My immune system was really functioning well. So 
bodybuilding doesn't have to be unhealthy. It can be a very healthy thing if you look at it as nourishing the body, not just dieting down everything, you know? Well, to me, it should so. be a healthy thing. It's a health sport. Yeah, well, it, it is a health sport. The natural bodybuilding can be a health sport. And there's some guys that are not natural out there that try to say otherwise, but that's just them trying to defend their shitty lifestyle choice. That's really what that is. Uh, the first thing, when I, first thing I came to the gym was, I don't want to do drugs. I've, I've seen drug physiques, of course, like Arnold, but I just, I don't know. I don't know what attracted me to being natural. Like, I remember, I think the first photo I saw of a natural bodybuilder was Steve Reeves, and I'm like, wow, that's a really nice physique. Then I saw you, and I, like, at, at first, I, I was like, he, he can be natural, he could be natural. And 50 50, but he, but then I look, I look more at your physique, and like it looks natural, like the way your biceps are developed, the way your shoulders are. And then I'll compare them to other guys that are actually on drugs, you can actually tell the difference. I just want to have a drug free physique, just yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you just want to have something you can keep, right? So, yeah, I think the hardest part about being a teenager is just because, like, actually, in my generation, because we got we had Instagram. And we have all this other social media sites and all that stuff. Like I remember seeing like these, even just like not like the biggest guys. They're just like skinny guys. They're just they don't. I'm not saying they're skinny. Like they're just they just didn't have a lot of muscle mass. They're just kind of average looking. They have abs. And I remember looking at them. I'm like, wow, I want to have abs, 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 abs. That was the first thing I wanted was abs. I was so crazy about that. I think just not every guy, but almost every guy that's been a little bit overweight or a little bit chubby is always like, oh, I want abs because I want that girl to like me or I want girls to be attracted to me. I just, and I remember listening to you, it's like, it's not, it's, <laughs> don't worry about that. Let your body grow. And that's the biggest thing I'm so grateful for. I'm even grateful to meet you. Mm. And it's actually a, truly an honor just even to be with you mm. because I actually never thought out I, I could even like see natural bodybuilder like mm. in person or even meet one. So like, even like being with you right now, getting to hang out with you and even being friends with you, that's, it's, it's truly an honor. Yeah. Well, no, it's, it's, it's just, the thing is, it's just, it's like the Sasquatch, right? People don't think it exists. <laughs> Natural bodybuilders are like the modern day Sasquatch because there's this like this mass sort of weird sort of cynicism. Everybody's like a conspiracy theorist. They think everybody is, is cheating somehow. Like everybody's, yeah. everybody's an ax murderer or doing something <laughs> that they should be doing, you know? It's kind of like this thing on the internet, but they don't think that anybody can do anything just by being a normal human being yeah. anymore. Like they think they're cheating. So yeah, yeah that, that's really the thing I'm trying to do is, is basically try to hold that kind of light in this channel. Because I, I was lucky. I was around a lot of good natural bodybuilders, right? So, uh, and they're still out there. I know a lot of guys that are natural bodybuilders that are tuning into this channel now or guys that weren't natural at some point in their life but then turned natural and then still got gains and still look great so yeah it just exists right it's really important to understand that you don't need to destroy yourself and that's that's the big thing i guess that's a big change that happened to me from being a teenager is that teenager is like you're like you're willing to do almost anything just yeah. to basically get somewhere in life and and i'd be like i'm pulling deadlifts even though my lower back feels bad but i'm going to just push through it <laughs> anyway you know, and I'm like, okay, then at some point I realized, oh, well, if I get one injury, that's about six months or two years off training the way I want to train. Uh, maybe it would have been smarter just to not push quite so hard that day, still maintain the gains that I have and maybe get gains in a different area, maybe different slow twitch fibers or something. Now I know there's a reason. Uh, so yeah, you, you just become wiser. You yeah, become yeah. wiser. You, you know, at least, okay, let me just change that. Some people get wiser. Not everybody gets wiser. Some people get wiser and some of us can choose and some of us come in wiser than others. Like, uh, you know, like I said, some guys your age are, are much wiser than, than I was and uh, yourself included at your age. But yeah, the, the thing is you can, you can make it. You can actually get a pretty outstanding physique. And honestly, when you look at some of those guys that are in the unnatural sort of arenas, like who wants a physique like that anyway? I mean, the guys can't breathe. I remember I was sitting at a bodybuilding show watching this bodybuilding show and a guy sat in the seat in front of me and he was like about 280, right? And he sat there and it was like, he could barely even breathe. He was like, <sighs> <sighs> like he was wheezing the whole time. I'm like, how in the hell is that supposed to be comfortable? Like, what, what is that? that? That can't even be, that's not even bodybuilding to me. Like, I mean, if, if your life is, if you're crippled, like why would you train to get crippled? Like that doesn't make sense. I mean, I'm training so that I can have a functional life. These guys are training to get crippled and doing whatever they are doing to themselves. So, so yeah. So yeah, no, that's, that's my goal is to basically help, uh, you know, give hope to people, at least, you know, people that want to have a healthy lifestyle and whatever, and yeah, and have some fun while I'm doing it. And hopefully I can just be a goof the whole time and then, you know, people can enjoy that, you know, that's important. You're, you're, you're happy now training? Oh, I'm, <laughs> I'm so happy. I, I, I used to come to the gym 
very sad and like I'd be for like, I'd be really depressed. And motivation and enthusiasm. Personal space, man. Personal space. Like, this guy steal my wallet. I'm doing leg press. <laughs> I feel a big shadow walk by. What was that? That was like a troll or something. Massive dude. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like we all do that. Even the older crowd that's on here. I'm not saying you're old, but you know what, you know what I mean. The older generation. Anybody older than 17 is like yeah, an old older than 17. bastard, um, right? You know, you like you have a hard, hard day at work. You come in, you know, you're not the best. You're not in the best mood, but you come to the gym that makes you happy. No, I would come to the gym upset, and I'd almost leave the gym upset because I didn't look like my goal physique. But with training with you and learning to enjoy the process, like, I mean, the, the day will come, I'll get to my physique. Like my yeah, of goal course. Physique. Yeah. But half but, the fun is getting there. It's yeah, not, it's, it's, getting not, there. Like, it's like the, the journey, right? It now. Like going to the yeah. gym, like I love getting a pump. Getting the pump's the best feeling in the world. And afterwards, you're like, oh, great. I, I get to go eat a meal. I get to go relax. And like, it just, it's, for me, it just, relaxes my mind mm. and gets me out of this little like cloud. It really, it's, it's really good mentally, especially at my age, cause I'm not just only growing with my body, like even like my brain, is, it's all messed up. I mean, I bet there's a lot of older people that are at my age and you know, it, everything's all weird and you're just like, whoa, and it just, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just a very weird age that I'm at right now. Well, especially in this day and age where everything's changing all the time, there's nothing really kind of too stable. People mm -hmm. are, are struggling to find their identity in the yeah. world and careers and all this. And yeah, training can give you that, that stability. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. that's the one thing that's kind of the stability in your life and that you focus on that and then from there, when you work with all the, the anarchy that is life, at least yeah. you've got that one thing to kind of be the center of the storm, you know what I'm saying? So, so it's, it's like a meditation. I mean, and the thing is, that's why I disagree with teenagers and people going into drugs and stuff, because they can actually be doing something constructive and find their, their, their sanity in that and, and gain in willpower and strength and clarity and awareness and all this stuff. And, and then from there, they can uh, you know, apply this skill set that they got from applying willpower and discipline yeah. and everything to anything else. I mean. Yeah. Because, you know, honestly, if, if you, uh, like the same type of mentality that you apply to the gym, you're, you're interested, you research, you read, or if you applied that to any of your courses oh, in school, yeah. which you're not doing, of course, but if you weren't doing, courses, but if you were doing that, you'd be an A student because you're just interested in something, right? So I think it, it's tremendously important for people to get interested in something that's kind of healthy for them instead yeah. of something that's destructive, right? Because, I mean, like, even before I started in the gym, I'd push myself, but not quite as hard. Ever since I went to the gym, it's like... I'll push myself just a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. Especially when I'm at work, I'm like, this is work, you gotta get it done, let's go, get it done, get it done. It just, it helps me out so much in life, especially with confidence, just with everything I do. Like, say if I'm stuck, even little things, like if I'm, if I'm stuck on little tasks and I want to get, get it done, it, my old self, I would be like, oh no, I'll, just, uh, I'll do it later. Oh no, I just like, I'll be like, oh, yeah. but no, I just, I want to get it done. Let's get it done now. Push yourself, push yourself, push yourself. And it's all about discipline in the gym. I, especially yeah. teaching myself that. And well, it helps your willpower, right? Yeah, willpower. Yeah. Even you, yeah. when a couple of sets, <laughs> I'll be struggling and you force me to do it. It's, mm -hmm. and it helps out so much. I still can't get them to show up to help me move furniture though. He still hasn't been able to show up for that. But that we're working on that. We're working on the willpower there. So, yeah. You're calling yeah. me yeah. out. Yeah. <laughs> we're calling him out publicly now. He stood me up. He's supposed to help me move some furniture. No, didn't show up. But, you know, hey, we're working on that. I can't even remember. Like, At some point, he's going to be strong enough. He'll be able to help me move furniture. It's good. Yeah, I was too weak. It was a low carb day. <laughs> yeah, it was like this willpower, it went, he drained down. It was like he lost his, his superpowers that day. But, you know. <laughs> yeah. But no, that's is you know all joking aside though whatever that that's that's the thing right it's like you're you're gaining a skill set your awareness is growing it's really like a meditation your awareness of your life's growing of the law of cause and effect yeah. and you're basically learning how to push willpower through uh, the the suffering that's in the body the pain that's in the body stuff so it's a tremendous skill and uh, I think a lot of our grandparents a lot of our great grandparents were forced to do this because their lives were hard and very physical. And, uh, and now it's almost like in this modern age, I think a lot of people are losing this disability. And uh, I think we're seeing this with, you know, everybody wins type trophy type mentality in the sports and stuff now. Uh, but this is basically something that, uh, 
doesn't have to be, you know, we, we still have our own power and you can still learn to realize that. And I think, I think, yeah, weight training is, is one of those great things because you're not just using willpower in a destructive way, you're using willpower in a balanced way because you need to basically be aware and it's like a relationship, right? So you're not just, you know, willing yourself through injuries, but you're basically <laughs> trying to use wisdom at the same time. So wisdom and willpower, good thing. So yeah, bodybuilding can really help with that. Yeah. And like even like just going to the gym in general gives me like a lot more confidence, especially being a teenager. Remember the first thing that I was scared of was actually going to the gym. I was so self-conscious. I'm like, oh, what if I'm doing something weird and people are going to judge me for doing it? <laughs> Like, did you say it like that? Yeah, yeah inside my head, I'm like, oh man. <laughs> but then I, I don't even get self-conscious going on the bench press. I'm like, what if I'm doing, what if I like do too much reps and I can't get the bar back up? Yeah. Now I don't care. It's like if I give out, I'm, a, I'm actually honored and humbled about it because like I was giving it all I got. And I just, I'll, I'll let it sit on me. Like maybe if it's like 35 plate, whatever, yeah. 45, I'll let it sit. I'm like, oh, then I'll put it back on. And just, that was the biggest thing. I. I was so like scared actually going to the gym. So basically performance anxiety. Yeah. You're basically going through anxiety. that. You're yeah. going through some sort of performance yeah. anxiety thing where you're kind of nervous about. And I think a lot of, a lot of teenagers are dealing with this now. It's like when they are out in public or something, they're nervous about interaction because mm -hmm. I guess there's just not the same type of yeah. practice because yeah. people are so used to being on Facebook yeah, instead of actually face to face. Like social insecurities. And just, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, and so you're so saying actually, yeah. I'm kind of strong on that because my friends will actually do me to do certain things. Like if they, do me, if they want me to order pizza, I have to like order it for them. If they want yeah. them to get food, I have to do it for them. It's yeah, like, yeah. I can't go talk to the person. Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. No, it's good though. Oh, okay. Yeah, but, so you're forced to face yeah. some things and, and sometimes the social culture that's in the gym. That's the other part of it. The gym is actually a bit of a social culture, so uh, it can have a negative side or a positive side. But in the end, you know, uh, I think integrating with people and making relationships is always a good thing, you know, at some point, I think. So, yeah, no, cool. No, pretty much what I'm trying to say is if you're a teenager watching this right now and you haven't gone to the gym yet and you're scared to do it, do it. It's the best decision I've ever made. It'll be the best decision you're ever going to make. You're going to change your life. You're going to learn so many things. I remember the, another thing, don't go into the gym all cocky because that's a, one of the first things I said. Don't go into the gym. I want to learn as much as I can. So that's what I did. I, I would ask people. I would interact. Even I wouldn't go like right when they're in between sets. I would like wait for them and I'd like, hey, how are you doing? I would get to know them. I would, almost then every time I see them, I would build that relationship. Like I'm meeting you, then we kind of like build that friendship and I would train with him and they just do it. Go to the gym. It's the best thing in the world. It's, mm. It changes your life. Don't, but don't let it take over your life. Because I, I did that for a moment, and it really, it does really, really does mess you up. It's, yeah, yeah. Well, you can't. It's yeah. like a healthy balance. Everything has to have a healthy balance. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Well, we're gonna follow you along anyway. So, I mean, if you guys want to see more about what Anthony's up to and stuff like that, I'll be uh, checking in with him from time to time with his training and stuff like that. So maybe we'll make some series. So if any of you guys want to see more teenage kind of perspective on this whole thing. Perhaps we'll have him back on here or not. Yeah. Uh, you can always thumbs down the video if you hate him, but yeah, that's okay too. Yeah, because you know, it'd be nice to have somebody else trolled for once instead of just me all the time. So that'd be nice. But anyway, thanks a lot for watching guys. If you need to get a hold of me, just go to naturalmindbodybuilding.com and thanks a lot to the Patreon supporters and take care for now. Thanks, Anthony. You're welcome, dude. Share my stuff.